Sutra, rendering all measureless world systems into dust. Within each particle of dust are measureless Kshetras. Within each of these are all the measureless Buddhas. He is able to clearly see them all without any grasping, knowing well living beings without giving rise to thoughts, knowing well speech without thoughts of speech. In all worlds his mind is without obstruction, and all is understood well without any attachment. His mind is vast like space. The affairs of the three Buddhas of time are all clearly penetrated. All doubts and delusions are totally annihilated, and he probably contemplates the Buddha Dharma without any grasping. So all the limitless lands of the ten directions, in a single thought, he goes without uh, with an attack uh, an unattached mind. He penetrates the multitude of dharmas of suffering in the world, and totally abides in the unproduced ultimate reality limit. To the measureless and difficult to conceive of places of the Buddha's assemblies, he goes and pays homage. He is always a superior leader to inquire of the first come ones about all the vows and practices cultivated by the Bodhisattva. Commentary rendering all measureless wound systems into dust. If one takes so many immeasurable and limitless world systems and grinds them up into separate particles of dust, within each particle of dust are measureless shetras. This number is extremely great. Within each of these are all the measureless Buddhas. Within each world system, there are all the immeasurable Buddhas teaching and transforming living beings. But the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind is able to clearly see them all without any grasping. He is able to discriminate such a large astounding number very clearly without any attachment. Knowing well living beings without giving rise to thoughts, the Bodhisattva knows well all living beings' minds what they want, yet when he teaches and transforms them. He is not attached to teaching and transforming, knowing well speech without thoughts of speech. The Bodhisattva understands all speech. He uses all kinds of speech to teach and transform beings, yet he is not attached to speech. In all worlds, his mind is without obstruction. He understands everything there is in the world. So there is nothing that can trouble the Bodhisattva, and all is understood well without any attachment. Because he understands worldly dramas and world transcending dramas, he has no attachments. His mind is vast like space. The Bodhisattva's thoughts and actions are the same as space. The affairs of the three Buddhas of time are all clearly penetrated. He not only knows the affairs of the present, he also knows the affairs of the past and future, that is, the phenomena and nomina of the three Buddhas of time are penetrated without obstruction. All doubts and delusions are totally annihilated. All ignorance and confusion have been cut off, so they exist no more. And he probably contemplates the Buddha Dharma without any grasping. Although he probably contemplates the Buddha Dharmas and receives and opposes all of them, yet he has no attachment to any of them. So all the limitless lands of the ten directions, all the worlds of the ten directions, and all the immeasurable limitless Buddha lands. In a single thought, he goes with an unattached mind. In a single thought, he is able to travel to the immeasurable, limitless Buddha lands of the ten directions. Yet, wherever he goes, his mind is not attached. He penetrates the multitude of dharmas of suffering in the world. He understands that in the world, all happiness is the cause of suffering, as it is said. 
a mind red sufferings scorch and burn, a multitude of evils fills the world, and he totally abides in the unproduced ultimate reality limit. The Bodhisattva always abides in the substance of reality, which is the true, still extinct appearance of dharmas. So, the measureless and difficult to conceive of places of the Buddha's assemblies, no number can measure them. All the Buddha's places of the way cannot be conceived of or expressed in words. So, then he goes and pays homage. The Bodhisattva goes to all those Buddha's way places so, and bows to all of them. He is always a superior leader who inquires of the first come ones. He is a superior leader who inquires amongst the Bodhisattvas before each Buddha. He questions the Buddhas about all of the Buddha dharmas and about all the vows and practices cultivated by the Bodhisattva. This means all of the vows and practices which Bodhisattvas want to cultivate. Sutra, he always recollects the Buddhas of the ten directions, yet he is without any reliance or grasping. He forever exhausts, exhausts living beings to plant gurus, adorning countries and causing them to be pure. All the destinies of birth in the three states of existence, he contemplates with the eye of non-obstruction, the nature of all of their habits, rules, and understandings, which are measureless and boundless, um, all clearly seen. The delight of the hearts of living beings are all clearly known. In this way, he accords with the opportunities to speak Dharma, defilement, and purity, he totally penetrates, causing beings to cultivate and enter the path, all measureless and countless samadhis. The Bodhisattva in a single thought is able to enter from them his thoughts of wisdom and that which is conditioned are all well understood and he obtains freedom and ease. The Bodhisattva attains this vast great wisdom and swiftly goes toward Bodhi without any obstruction because he wishes to benefit the flocks of beings. In every place he propagates the Dharma of great heroes. Commentary He always recollects the Buddhas of the ten directions. The Bodhisattva who practices the path of the Bodhisattva above cultivates the path of the Buddha and below transforms living beings. He is always mindful of all the Buddhas of the ten directions and the three birds of time, yet he is without any reliance or grasping. Although he is mindful of all the Buddhas of the three birds of time, he is not dependent on them. He does not grasp or reject them. This is because the Bodhisattva knows that the Buddhas have already become Buddhas, living beings will become Buddhas, and he himself is on his way to becoming a Buddha. So he is without any attachment or a place of reliance. He has broken through them all. He forever exhausts living beings to plant gurus. The Bodhisattva always uses various expedient dharma doors and words to teach all living beings to plant many gurus and not plant any seed of evil. At the same time, he is adorning countries and causing them to be pure. He adorns all the Buddha lands of the ten directions, thereby causing them all to become pure. All the destinies of birth in the three states of existence, all living beings in the three states of existence, the desire, form, and formless realms, he contemplates with the eye of non obstruction. The Bodhisattva uses the unobstructed eye of wisdom to contemplate all living beings' causes and circumstances, the nature of all of their habits, rules, and understandings, all of living beings various habits, rules and understandings, which are measureless and boundless, are all clearly seen. The Bodhisattva understands them all. This means that he clearly sees what delights the hearts of living beings. The delight of the hearts of living beings are all clearly known. The Bodhisattva knows the various things that living beings want. In this way, he accords with 
the opportunities to speak Dharma because he understands the root natures of living beings and all the things they like. He speaks the Dharma for them. Defilement and purity he totally penetrates. The Bodhisattva understands all defined and pure Dharmas thus causing beings to cultivate and enter the path. He encourages all living beings to rely on various expedient dharma doors to cultivate and put an end to all their habits and forms, thereby causing them to enter the way and unite with reality. All measureless and countless samadhis, so many measureless and countless samadhis and liberations, the Bodhisattva in a single thought is able to enter. Within a single thought, the Bodhisattva is able to enter all these various samadhis. Form from them, his thoughts of wisdom and that which is conditioned, or conditioned circumstances, or objects of thought and the mind which tries to take advantage of situations take advantage of situations are all well understood and he obtains freedom and ease with the concentration his false thoughts cease and his wisdom manifests and he understands everything very very clearly so that he is able to obtain true freedom and ease the bodhisattva attains this vast great wisdom the bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind has obtained this kind of vast wisdom and understands all states and swiftly goes toward body without any obstruction he quickly goes towards the body way without the slightest bit of obstruction because he wishes to benefit the flocks of beings because the bodhisattva wishes to benefit all beings in every place he propagates the drama of great heroes. In all places and at all times he explains and extols the eight dramas taught by great people. In a sutra entitled The Eight Types of Enlightenment of a Great Person, the Buddha discusses the eight dramas which great people enlighten to. They are very similar to the eight teachings found in the sutra called The Buddha Bequeaths the Last Teaching. The first drama of a great person is reducing desire. This means not having any thoughts of desire, not wanting fame, benefit, to be a leader, or any of the other desires. The second teaching is contentment. Contentment means always being happy, able to be patient when it's naturally at ease. If you have contentment, you will always be satisfied and blissful. You, if you are without contentment, you are continually troubled. Therefore, if one is satisfied with everything, one is always content. This, the third is quietude. This means there's no sound whatsoever. One always cultivated the drama or quietude. The fourth is vigor. If one is continuously vigorous, one will awaken, so don't be lazy. The fifth is the proper mindfulness. In being mindful, it is important to have proper mindfulness, so don't have devin mindfulness. The sixth is proper concentration. One always cultivates proper concentration and doesn't enter devin concentrations. The seventh is proper wisdom. One doesn't want to have worldly knowledge and still in debate, which is devin no. Lynch. The eighth is not having idle discussions one shouldn't indulge in small talk. When a person who doesn't usually engage in small talk speaks, his words are sincere without any idle speculations. This idea is also discussed in the Buddha Bequeaths, the last teaching sutra. If one wishes to ascend the nirvana, one has to change little discussions to so stalling of liberation. One should use these eight teachings to teach and transform living beings about nirvana. So people who cultivate the way always want to practice the eight principles taught and understood by great persons. Sutra, he well knows long and short compass of the wounds, a single month or half a month, down to a day and night. Countries are each different, but their natures are level and equal. He constantly contemplates them diligently without becoming plagues. 
commentary, he well knows long and short compass of the wounds a Bodhisattva is able to regard the events beyond 80,000 great compass, whereas an Ahat can only regard the, the events within 80,000 great compass. This Bodhisattva is not only able to contemplate the events beyond and within 80,000 great compass, he also knows the causes and circumstances of the longest and shortest compass, as well as their stages of coming into being, dwelling, destruction, and being empty. A compass is made up of one increase and one decrease. An increase means that for every hundred years, the average lifespan of human beings increases in one, one year and their height increases that one inch. During a decrease, their lifespan and height decrease according to the same ratio. A decrease begins when the average human lifespan is 84,000 years and ends when it has decreased to 10 years. At that point, the average lifespan again increases until it reaches 84,000 years. One decrease and increase is known as one compa. 1,000 of this compa is called a small compa. 20 of this small compa is called a middle side compa. And four middle side compas make up a great compa. This long and short compass of coming into being, dwelling, destruction, and being empty represent an inconceivable number of years. The Bodhisattva knows them all. He also knows the short periods of time which are a single month or half a month down to a day and night and so forth. Countries are each different, but their natures are level and equal. Also, lands are not all the same, their natures are identical. He constantly contemplates them diligently without becoming blacks. The Bodhisattva who studies all types of wisdom and has enlightened to all the circumstances and causes of coming into being, dwelling, destruction, and being empty, never becomes lax. He follows the rules and does not play. He's always vigorous.